So, Kevin. Kevin Burns. Kevin Mullen. Uh, I am the director of the 13 Strings Chamber Orchestra here in Ottawa. And we're doing a project for which Kevin has got many hats. <laughs> Uh, would you like to explain what, what you're doing in this production? Well, I've written a script for it. Yep. Uh, I'll be directing some actors and uh, hoping that everything just goes splendidly well. Uh, organizing the costumes? <laughs> that true, That's yes. True. They're going to be dressed in full Baroque gear. Who are they? They uh, are Bach and Handel and the Chevalier John Taylor. Okay. This is a concert that is uh, in conjunction with the Canadian National Institute of the Blind. It's their 100th anniversary this year. So we have made this project that you and I have been talking about for several years now, where uh, we started 1918, which was the start of that organization, and we go back 200 years. And we have Bach and Handel, both of whom had severe eye trouble, and who were operated by this man, the Chevalier John Taylor. Uh, not to great success. Well, you have to remember eye surgery in the early 1700s would be devastating to think about. No anesthetic and no implements that we would recognize today. And uh, you'd be uh, manhandled down into a chair while the procedure happened. Terrifying when you think about it. So Chevalier John Taylor made his career doing this. Uh, some people consider him to be the worst charlatan in the history of medicine. Others have a, a more generous uh, insight, thinking that he was maybe an innovator way ahead of his time. So what we've done basically is we're, uh, we're taking music from the period, two pieces by Handel, two pieces by Bach, the Brandenburg Concertos number three and five, and then the two pieces by Handel are the Overture to Giulio Cesare and Handel uh, Opus six number four. And around those pieces, we have made a dialogue with one being Bach, one being Handel, and the Chevalier John Taylor coming in. Now, Bach and, Ta Bach and Handel were both born the same year, and uh, however, had never met, even though they were living 30 miles away. It seems incredible to us. There were a few attempts for each to meet the other. So we have invented a scenario where here they are meeting each other. Well, history would tell us that the attempts were actually all on Bach's side. It was Bach who wanted to True. see Handel. Yeah. Handel was probably too busy doing other things. But uh, there are many interpretations of that story. Right. Uh, and, of course, we have a slightly um, uh, imagined version of the story in the, in, the, in the telling of it. But it is... Is that the one where, where Handel is supposed to be hiding? That's Bach, right. Come, Bach visits, but he's, uh, Handel doesn't want to meet him, is intimidated or whatever it is. But I think that that may well be just, that's the imagination going there. It's right? musical mythology that yeah, uh, yeah. We, we want to create Bach, this elevated figure, and handle this great populist. And we have different kind of theories about each one. And, and, and that's one of the quirky things about the, the, their biographies. There are hundreds of books about Handel and Bach, but in general, we know very little about their lives as we would want to understand them today. So we have Bach and Handel on both sides of the stage. And then the Chevalier, John Taylor, comes in, he has a big cloak, and he says, My subject is light. And that's the name of the concert. We take this uh, expression from uh, the name of a, a lecture that he gave, gave many times. Chevalier John Taylor called himself the Chevalier. He never he had no rank or status. He invented it for himself. He could made, I do that? Could I be Chevalier Kevin You could be the Chevalier Kevin okay, I like that. I like that. And I would be the ophthalmiator royal, as he also uh, described himself, an, another made-up word. Uh, Taylor was a show, uh, a, a great entertainer, would, uh, arrived in great style in a carriage, horses, flowing cape behind him, um, very extravagant, very, um, very theatrical. And we play that uh, in, in this concert. And the thing about Taylor is that he would go from community to community, do some free operations, hoping to get paid people, and then very quickly leave, just in case there were, there were problems, shall we say, and there were, frequently were problems. Yeah, we, we bring in a few other little things, for example, the fact that when Bach went to Curtin um, for uh, Leopold to take the baths, that when he came back, his um, wife uh, was dead and buried. 36 years of age. Extraordinary. And the kids were like running around the house with nobody really looking after them. And uh, so that's a very poignant story that we bring into this, this scenario. 
And all the while, um, the pieces that we play are reflected in the, in, the, in the script and vice versa. So Brandenburg 5 is upbeat, where the over, um, Opus 6, number 4 of Handel is more um, reflective. So we bring that. And then we go to uh, 1918. What's the significance of 1918? Well, 1918 uh, marked the end of the First World War, but it also saw the foundation of CNIB, Canadian National Institute for the Blind. And this was because uh, during the war, many, many wounded uh, soldiers, uh, blinded or visually impaired, were returning to Canada with very little support. So a group of volunteers, seven people basically got together and said, we could do better than this, and created an institution that continues today to provide service and support and uh, engagement uh, in the lives of people dealing with uh, vision loss and blindness. Uh, so you had these, these uh, soldiers returning from the war with blind, blindness and visual impairment, but there was another uh, event that happened around then that really made it necessary for them to be an institution. Yes. And that was the explosion in Halifax Harbour. That's right, so that was 1917. So toward the end of the First World War, a munitions ship collided with another ship in the harbour, causing this catastrophic explosion that uh, uh, basically destroyed uh, the downtown Halifax as we know it, uh, made thousands homeless and blinded about seven or eight hundred people uh, because of the, all the glass uh, shards of glass that were flying all over the place. So when you put those two forces together, the explosion in the harbour and the, the impact of returning soldiers after the First World War, what you see is a movement ready to happen to support people in terms of education, uh, employment, uh, to support people uh, dealing with vision loss or blindness. So to, in musical terms, we play two um, Quebec uh, folk songs that are arranged by Ernst McMillan, a uh, Canadian composer, young Canadian man actually who was travelling on the continent, actually was at Bayreuth, wasn't he, That's to, right. to, uh, to see the operas of Wagner. He's uh, taken prisoner, he's in a uh, prisoner of war camp, and um, we play these two pieces by this Canadian composer. Part of what I didn't know before this is that when he was in prison, he actually completed his doctorate yeah, it's by, for Cambridge. Yes, by mail order, I guess it was. Oh, it was at Oxford. Maybe it was <laughs> Oxford. Yeah. Oxford, yeah. And I thought that was an extraordinary thing. Yeah. But that is part of our um, 1918 uh, celebration then of this composer. Then we bring it to today. And uh, the orchestra has a wonderful uh, collaboration with the University of Ottawa, where we take five or six young composers and we, get, we workshop a work by each of them. We choose one who gets a prize and we'll get a prize actually as part of our script. And we're very happy that this young woman called Noura Takai has written a beautiful work that's with the theme of light. And so she should, we bring that up to date. Handel and Bach actually talk to her, <laughs> yes. which is really, really great to think of that, in, uh, that right. dynamic there. Uh, and actually, they're like amazed that there's an award. Just startled that there would be payment <laughs> exactly, for a composer. Yes, for a composer, yeah. which would never have happened in their day in, in that way. And then we invite everybody to go to the other hall, the Woodside Hall, a concert in Dominion Chalmers. Uh, and in the Woodside Hall, there is a display from the Canadian National Institute. Would you describe that? Yeah, it's called That All May Read. And one of the things that CNIB uh, focused on very early on was how to deal with literacy, how to deal with reading, uh, acquisition of knowledge, you know, basic things uh, when you uh, either have severely damaged uh, vision or none at all. So the exhibition follows a century of different ways of printing, different ways of reading, different ways of presenting materials. So from Braille to raised type to you know, all the different audio systems in place over the last century, uh, all in an attempt to bring uh, books and learning to those who are dealing with vision loss. So that uh, exhibit will be on before, during the intermission and afterwards. And at the end, we're going to have a, a blind person with dog, mm -hmm. because we expect there to be a lot of guide dogs yeah, at the concert. Right. 
Uh, I always, I'm expecting there to be a, an amazing howl in the middle of something, but you have guaranteed Absolutely me it won't happen. Yeah. So we'll see about that. But actually, one of these gentlemen goes on on stage with the dog and invites everybody to go into the other hall to see the display. One of the great things about um, people using guide dogs is that when those dogs have the harness on, they are on duty and oh. utterly, completely silent. I, I look forward to that. And of course, a part of our collaboration with the CIB is a lot of volunteers who will help uh, the, the visually impaired and will actually sort of help the hall be sort of set for them. That's right. So that's great. The concert is on May the 4th in Ottawa, Dominion Chalmers Church at 7.30. And uh, we really hope that uh, this is going to inspire, inspire you to go and buy tickets and to, to really support this enterprise. Thanks very much, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Good. Yeah. Seems to be seems to be the ticket, doesn't it?